Right, we're now getting into some interesting stuff. Say you had a geometric series and you wanted to know what the total of that series was, the sum of that series was, just like we did an arithmetic series. How could you go about doing that? Well, let's have a think. There's a neat trick here, a bit like Gauss's thing. The difference is the person that came up with it, as I understand it, didn't get clobbered around the head on that lazy Friday afternoon because he'd done the math too quickly. Let's imagine we've got a geometric series, remember? first term would be a, the second term would be a times r, the third term would be a times r times r, r squared, and so on and so on, right up to the nth term, which would be a times r to the power of n minus 1. And let's call the total of this, the sum of this, s, just like we did for an arithmetic series. Now the trick this time is not to write it out backwards and take one away from the other, like Gauss's trick for the arithmetic series. The trick this time is to times everything by r. We're going to times the entire top line by r. Okay. Now watch what happens. So this first term, it was a. Now we've times it by r. It's now ar. And, and I'm lining it up over here for a reason, which we'll see in a minute. This term ar. Now I've times that by r. Is now ar squared. ar squared times it by another r becomes ar cubed. And so on and so on until we get to this term, which when you times it by another r, becomes ar to the n. Now you're probably thinking, OK, what's this got to do with it? Well, can you see? Because we've now got an AR and an AR squared and AR cubed and so on in, every, in both lines. Watch what happens when we do a subtraction. If I do this line, take away that line, or that line, take away that line, and it doesn't really matter which way around we do it, watch what happens. I'm going to do the second line, take away the first line. So if I do this, take away this, I've now got RS minus S over on this side. This, RS, take away this. On this side, I've got AR, take on AR, AR squared, take on AR squared, and so on, and so on, and so on, until really what I'm left with, because these all sort of cancel themselves out, is AR to the N minus A, because remember there's nothing here, so I've got like nothing take away A. So you're thinking, yeah, and? Well, let's do a little bit of playing about with it now, a little bit of factorising. What's the common factor over here? It's S. And over here, what's the common factor? A, there's an A in both terms. Mm, Starts to look a bit interesting. Remember, why have we done all this? Because we want to find a formula for the sum of a series, S. So how do I get S by itself? I'm going to divide by R minus 1. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a formula for the sum of a series, for the sum of a geometric series, it's a brackets r to the n minus 1 all over r minus 1. You could be asked to prove this in an exam, but it's worth knowing anyway, because if all else fails and your mind goes blank, this is a very powerful thing to know. Now, the other thing we could have done, just to show you for completeness, is what if we'd done the top line, take away the bottom line? So let's just do the top line, take away the bottom line. We would then have s take away rs. And then these bits would all still cancel out, but you'd be left with a minus a r to the n. So you see these are kind of swapped around these terms. We would factorise just as before. And we divide through again. And there is another formula for the sum of a geometric series if you know a, if you know r, and if you know n. And you're probably thinking, well, what's the difference between these two formula? Absolutely nothing. But generally speaking, just to make it a bit easier, we use this version of the formula if r is more than 1. Just have a look at that. If r is more than 1, can you see that r take away 1 would be positive? You're not having to divide by a negative number then. Okay. But again, it really doesn't matter. You just might end up dealing with negative numbers if you didn't use it then. Over here, we tend to use if r is between 0 and 1. Because then when you do 1 take away that, you're left with a, a positive number again. But as I said, it really doesn't matter which one you use, but you do need to know this trick, you do need to know how to define this and prove it to come up with it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is how you find the sum of an infinite series, and that, ladies and gents, is even more exciting. I know you can barely contain yourself, we're well, going to have to until you load up the next video.